Yo, what's going on boys? LA Cool J back here with a new guide video for you. We're gonna do frost today. We're gonna go through all the frost staffs, talk about how to use them, you know, what's the best situation, like gear-wise. So we we'll start right here on your first Q button right here. Boom, let's go frost bolt. Now frost bolt's sick. This is what you're gonna be running with pretty much at all times, because frost bolt, it's a spell that deals X amount of damage and it slows the enemy by 25% for 5.2 seconds. Okay, so now this is the cast time. So it's like, you know, you cast it and then you shoot it, and boom, it slows the enemy. This is extremely strong, like, yeah, it does a pretty good amount of damage. It's not like the best damage out there, but I mean, you know, it scales. But slowing your enemies is just like game changer. So like, this is where it's at. All right. Now the next one is going to be your AOE, Horror Frost. Now, uh, this is a spell that you target and you put it on the ground and when it explodes into three meteor radius and it deals like 388 damage or, or you know, X amount of damage because it scales. Uh, but it doesn't slow in your enemies or anything like that. So it's just like a nice little AOE. Definitely Frost Bolt because Frost Bolt does damage and it slows them. Now that's critical, boys. Critical. Yeah, it's single target, but it's the most utility single target you can get out of that. Let's go to the W's. Okay, boys, so we're going to talk about Frostbolt. Now, Frostbolt is super sick. Now, don't underestimate this. This thing does a tremendous amount of damage. It's like a little AoE burst of just disgustingness. So check it out. You throw it on the ground, and after a short delay, it, it's very short delay, like, like half a second or a second, um, it explodes, and then it impacts all enemies in a five meteor radius, dealing lots of damage but here's the cool thing not only does it do damage but it also reduces the movement speed of everybody that's affected by the bomb by 20 percent for nine seconds this is nuts if you put down a frost bomb and you hit them with that and then you get a couple casts off your q like you're you're literally just you're so much faster than them right there like already that's like a 40 percent because if you get the q on there then this uh that's the 40 percent movement reduction that you got on this target uh, if you're thinking about it in a, in a PvP sense, it's just disgusting. Frost has so much utility, but don't underestimate that. This does a lot of damage. If you pair this with, like, let's say the Grace Frost E, and then this, so Frost Nova is the next one. Now, this is my favorite spell in the, in the in the W tree. Now, don't get me wrong, all the other ones have massive utility and does damage, all these cool things. Actually, all of them are really really cool. This was really fun for like ganking, or if you're trying to catch somebody in a ZVZ, or just you know small scale PvP or something, or if somebody's trying to run away, a ganker or or any kind of like you know gather if you want to gather i don't know but like it it roots them in place it's super cool but you have to catch up to them so it's it's a uh, you have to play with this so anyway let's go so frost bomb you put it so you from your target location that you blink away it freezes all enemies in a five meter radius does a pretty good amount of damage and they're frozen for two seconds and they can't move or attack or nothing boom frozen but it's not to the point where like you blink to them and you freeze them you you blink from the spot that you blink so it's really cool if you're getting attacked by melees or something like that and you know because the swords are really popular right now and they're bruising on you and you blink away you freeze them and you can hit them with like an e or like a, a double q or not double q but you can probably get one q off frost beam is next frost beam is a channeled ability now the longer you channel it the more it stacks up but what it does is it um, does a little bit of damage but it reduces their movement speed and their attack speed by 15 percent now it stacks up to five times. So if you get a full stack on this, you're reducing their movement speed and attack speed by 75%. But you are vulnerable because you are, it's a channel ability. So you're rooted, you know, you got to stand still, channel it, and it does have to stack up. All right, Shatter is just a cool looking ability. So Shatter is the last one that you get here in the W tree. And you create an area, it's a cone in front of you. You slam down your, uh, your stave, <laughs> you slam down your staff. And it creates a cone of frost in front of you. And it deals about, you know, 400 damage is not that bad, but it's really cool because it hits everybody in front of you. So it could be, you know, 10 enemies in front of you. It's going to hit all of them. And and it creates three rows. So it hits them for each dealing 351 damage, as it says right here. So that's that does three times. So it's actually pretty cool. It hits three times. So, you know, three, six, nine, you know. So it depends on if you just do base damage. So basically, a thousand damage, you know, to mobs. Like, that's probably a bit lower to um, players. But in front of you, it's a cone in front of you, boom, one, two, three, damage. It's pretty cool. It does a lot of damage. I think it's pretty, you know, it's a pretty fun ability to play with. So the first one we're going to go here is the Great Frost. Now, the Great Frost is probably the most used Frost staff. It's like a little mini blazing. So this thing right here, this ability is called Hail. You slam down your staff and, and it's a targeted location. So you put it wherever you want. And then it rains down two waves of um, icicles and it does a lot of damage each time. And anyone caught in that area, it, the damage cannot be reflected. Now, here's the cool thing about all. Okay, now this is something that I want to mention. All the frost staff abilities, like the the E's and stuff like that, they cannot be reflected. Now that's really strong in ZVZs and stuff like that, because you know if you have demon armor and stuff like that, reflect the damage back. It's pretty pretty disgusting. So this is true damage that can't be reflected. Super cool. And like I said, it's on a really short cooldown, a 15 second cooldown. 
uh, blazing cooldowns like what 40 seconds I hope I'm, I'm right on that um, but you can get like almost three of these off or basically before like, almost three before you can get a, uh, a blazing off and then, like, that's why people call this the budget blazing because if you have really nice specs in grape frost uh, you can do some disgusting amount of damage and like hits boom boom a lot of damage great frost probably my favorite and probably everybody's favorite uh staff especially for damage 100 percent we're gonna go over the next one it's gonna be the regular frost staff and i'm just gonna say we're doing the non-artifacts first so the great frost is non-artifact this is non-artifact this is non-artifact then we'll do the artifact second so i want to clear that up so the great frost is a one-handed frost staff and this was pretty cool because this was uh the staff that uh People use for ganking. I remember back when the game first launched, uh, there was invisible gankers with the frost staff. Disgusting. They'd be invisible. You know, they'd be um, in ambush or whatever. And then uh, somebody'd run by and they'd come out and hit you with the fucking freezing wind. All right, boys. So the ability is called freezing wind. Attacking enemies in an AoE cone in front of you, dealing a pretty good amount of damage, not gonna lie. And it roots all enemies for 2.1 seconds. Now, that's pretty cool because it's on a 15 second cooldown. It's an AoE cone in front of you. And it roots the enemies and does damage. So it's, it's so the cool thing about Frost is Frost, yeah, it can do some damage and it um, has a lot of utility. But the main thing that the Frost is there for, Frost is there to help your team set up kills. You know, like I mean, like if people are in a clump in like a in like a choke or like something like that, you can you can just like you know root them, freeze them, all kinds of things. So Frost is slow them. Uh, so Frost is really, really, really good for setting up kills. Setting up kills for yourself or setting up kills for your team. It doesn't really matter. It's just like, it's the ultimate, like, damage setup uh, staffs that I would say. I love Frost so much. So Freezing Wind, AoE cone in front of you. It freezes them, does a lot of damage. It's super awesome. The next staff is called Glacial. Now, Glacial is <laughs> one of those, like, ZBZ weapons that, like, uh, gets used and never gets used and gets used again. Uh, Glacial is super fun to play with actually. So basically what Glacial does, it creates this ice storm in front of you. You put it down wherever location you want. I know I said in front of you, but you put it wherever you want. And then it moves forward. And enemies that are in the ice storm take damage and they're slow by 50% and it stacks up to three times. Now that's pretty awesome because it just like sits there and people that are in the ice storm are slowed, take damage, and it stacks up. So like I said, Frost is, an this is another great weapon for ZBZs or that just any kind of PvP that you can just like keep people in the spot long enough for people to react. You can use it defensively too, like if um, you're getting pushed really, really hard, you need a reset, throw this down in front of you and kind of step back behind it and get your reset because these guys have to come through this. <clears throat> so it's a really, really, really good way to play defensively and offensively. Okay, so the Icicle Staff is going to be next. The thing is called Frozen Hell. What a badass name. Um, another one of these things, you just target it, put it wherever you want. And it puts a... And this one sits in the spot. So it puts um, on the ground like this frozen like Tundra type uh, AoE. And it lasts for 5 seconds. And all enemies in the area receive a medium... Like a, that's not a lot of damage. 70 damage. It does skill. That's not a lot of damage. But they are slowed by 75% for 3 seconds. Another one of these... Um, it's just another one of these weapons that allows you to play offensively and defensively to be able to set up your uh, team for, you know, getting kills, getting away. This is used actually a lot. Th this staff and the one I just showed you all ago. So the Icicle staff and then, of course, this one right here that I was talking about, the Glacial. Those are used in um, ZBZs a lot because they don't, they're not necessarily there for the damage. They're there for the utility of slowing people, keeping them rooted, using it defensively, using it uh, offensively. Okay, now here's the troll. <laughs> the the troll staff the horror frost staff now this launches a big icy rock that grows bigger and bigger and bigger just like how the frost staff i mean the the fire staff has one of these and then whenever it hits the enemy they receive a little bit a uh, pretty good amount of damage about 500 damage and they're frozen for three seconds that's a pretty long ass freeze actually and um it's not just one enemy it's <laughs> you could be a clump of enemies like two three four you know freezes all of them and like i said another one this damage cannot be reflected so that's really awesome okay so the next one here is the permafrost. Now the permafrost is just the just a tight, like it's just a rad looking weapon. You're holding this ice skull, like I don't know, like the Lich King up in your boys. Anyway, so it has an ice crystal. Now ice crystal is super cool. You throw it in the location, and then it freezes all enemies in the location for one second, and then after it's done freezing, it explodes and does damage to everybody in the radius. Now it explodes and does in a seven meter radius. So anybody in that seven meter radius will get the damage. Um, it does 600 magical damage to players and like, you know, 800 to mobs. Um, honestly, for a 45 second cooldown, it doesn't do a lot of damage. And that's the problem with this weapon. This weapon could be the main frost weapon. It's still fun in ZVZs. 
Um, you know, it's really fun to, like I said, you, you set up kills for your boys. But it's on such a long cooldown that you're going to need, like, a um, assassin's um, hood. You know, so you can, like, channel your and your, lower your cooldowns. But this is a, it's such a fun weapon and can be just utilized more and more and more. I think if the cooldown was at least 40 seconds, I mean, that would be better. But, I mean, you know, if the cooldown is going to stay at 45 seconds, the damage needs to be increased by at least 25%. Now, I know that sounds crazy, 25% damage. You know, and that might scale too much. It might be wrong. Maybe 15%. But with, but with the cooldown being this long, I feel like the damage could be a little bit more. But either way, all in all, I just love this weapon. That's where we jump on to the, to the gear. Let's go over the passives real fast. Uh, the first passive, every three normal attacks uh, roots the enemy. That's really, really, really strong. Basically, you're going to use this until you can unlock uh, the aggressive caster. On the next one here, energetic. Um, Frost is very mana heavy. So if you don't have, like, you know, scholar shoes or, a, you know, like a royal helm or a druid cow, uh, definitely use energetic. But... Try to find a ways to get your mana through those other um, gear that I was talking about so you cannot waste putting auto attacks in. You should always be spamming your Q whenever you don't have your other skills ability. Aggressive caster, probably the best one. Aggressive caster is so good because, you know, every four active spells you gain a, a cast speed buff for 40% for three seconds. Massive. Uh, can definitely turn a fight in your way and just also just burn people down super fast. Uh, the last one here is going to be the Furious. Now, Furious Recoil, every, but it's every five active spells, your damage gets an increase by 10% in four seconds. That's really, really, really nice. Um, it's a really nice ramp up. You have to build it up. You know, you got to put like, you know, you know, got to queue them down a couple times and put a bomb down and, you know, put your E down. I don't know. Um, it's pretty cool, but it's not, it's not overpowered because it is every five spells. So it's pretty strong, but all in all, Aggressive Caster is definitely the way to go unless you're ganking. If you are ganking, then go with Frost, because every three normal attacks roots the enemy. It's super, super, super strong. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the gear real fast. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the offhands super fast, and for one for the the one-handed Frost staffs. Um, basically, because there's a cast time and on the Frost, and it's very cast heavy and stuff like that. Um, the book is perfect. You know, it uh, helps you have max energy, which is great. Um, energy regen, which is great, and it gives you a cast uh, modifier, which is really, really, really strong. Um, honestly, the book is my favorite, but there is other options. You can go the horn, which is just a straight uh, cooldown modifier, which is okay, you know, no big deal. Or you can be big baller and use the taproot, which a taproot is going to give you like max hit points and um, healing bonus to see. Just like this is more of like a, you know, you want to just survive and stuff like that kind of thing. But all in all, like my, I think all in all. I know I just said that twice, but I think that uh, the book is the best for this class, especially for even for fire and also for um, arcane as well. But like I said, I would pick between the book. I know it's called the master's tome. It's called a tome of spells. I just call it the book. Um, I would either pick the book or the taproot. Those are my two options. Um, books aren't that books aren't that expensive. I don't think taproots are too expensive now. I haven't bought a taproot in a super long time. I'm pretty sure they get expensive at higher tiers, but maybe at a lower tier, not a big deal. But book, perfectly way to go. For helmets, I would say go Royal Cow. Royal Cow is a spell that um, you activate. Okay, it's on a 30 second cooldown. Okay, but it's activated for 15 seconds. So for 15 seconds, you have unlimited energy. Energy. Er, you have unlimited energy, so you can cast as many spells as you want without casting any energy away from you. And it's on a 15. I'm sorry. It's basically a 15 second cooldown because it's a 30. It's the 30 second cooldown, but it lasts for 15 seconds. This is the strongest. Now these wasn't that expensive, but now that new random dungeons came out, all royal gear is pretty expensive because not many people are doing the harder editions anymore. So. Um, the good, but it's an artifact. So the good thing about that is uh, you can go out in a, like a four two or something like that, and uh, still get a nice IP bonus from it, and then also still get the benefit of using this. Especially you have, and as you build more um, specialization in the artifact helmets, uh, it won't be that big of a deal at all. But so the royal cow is like your number one, hundred percent. So the the budget royal cow is the scholar um, cow, and now this is called an energy shield. Basically, it's also a thirty second cooldown. And um, when you activate it, any time that somebody attacks you, uh, you gain mana back. Super strong and also it's, it's a double-edged sword because it also reduces the incoming damage that you take. Pretty cool. So like you, um, it's like a little small defensive and you get energy back. Um, it's really, really, really strong. Um, I do like it, but the problem is if you're not getting attacked, you are not getting that energy. 
So, but at the same time, you know, you can pair this with Scholar Boots. And then if you have Scholar Boots, you'll always have Energy and an Escape and then a Defensive. That's pretty cool. The Cleric Cow, the Cleric Cow is just awesome for tons of classes. Ice Block, Ice Block lasts forever. And then you're immune to all incoming damage. Like it's nuts, man. Ice Block, uh, when, you know how Curse is a big deal right now with the Curse Bombs, you know, you can either dodge roll that with Assassin Shoes or you can use Ice Block. Um, Ice Block saves me tons, many a time. Okay, so for the for the chest, um, there's two main chests that I believe is the best for Frost because Frost doesn't have a lot of damage. So you wanna be able to um, accent that damage as much as you can. So the, the, the Druid Robe here, I know I have a flat A Druid Robe. I don't know where I got this from, but I was like, I'm putting it on. <laughs> um, so it has this thing called Obsessive Burst. Now it's on a one minute cooldown and you pop it. Now every time that you do an ability, it stacks and it stacks up to eight times. So like, and it increases your damage and heal power by 7% and it lasts for 10 seconds. So basically you pop this, you, you know, do confuse, you blink, you, you do your, you just waste all your cooldowns. And then when you get as many stacks as you think you can before, whether it's eight or six or even five, just get as many stacks as you can before that timer runs out and then use your E, you know, which is your big damage on every weapon, then drop that E down. Or even if you've already used your E, maybe use your W, you know, with the um, frost bomb. Like I said, the Frost Bomb does do a lot of damage. Uh, so a sense of burst is kind of the way to go. Uh, Fire uses it a lot. Uh, Frost needs it, especially to get that extra damage from that out. But it is a little bit expensive because it is a artifact. All right, so the next one is gonna, I don't know why I don't have a T8 Scholar Robe. I don't know, it's somewhere in the world, who knows. Anyway, this one's called, this one is like uh, super awesome because it's um, not an artifact, it's easy to get, they're really cheap and it's easy to level up to get it to 100 spec which gives you a nice uh, bonus to your fame credits. You get an ability called Speed Caster. Now it doubles your casting speed and increases the energy and decreases the energy cost by all your spells by 70% for eight seconds. So it's on a 40 second cooldown. So if you pop this bad boy and start just spamming your Q and then, you know, it's disgusting. And then on top of that, you can get like a double bonus with like your, um, or like your aggressive caster. It's really, really, really strong. Also, it's a really another good way to help save mana because it does reduce the energy cost that you do for all your spells by 70%, which is pretty, pretty epic. Okay. Let's talk about shoes real fast. Um, boots, some sneakers, gotta get them Nikes on. Um, so they're, so I like blink. Uh, Blink is awesome. I love Cleric Sandals. Cleric Sandals is my favorite Blink. There is also Mage Sandals, which is a delayed Blink. It's a bigger Blink, um, but I'm not that good. I don't know. Like, I'm not so rab. I can't just delayed Blink out of the most awesomest shit ever. So I need, I'm more of a reactive guy and he's a proactive player. So I use, but you can use whatever you want. I I prefer Cleric because if I'm, I, and also when I'm GBGing and Curse and even uh, sometimes heals, I like to have the cleric sandals because I can blink out of roots, I can blink out of like, you know, bad situations. It's really nice on a 20 second cooldown. It is a little bit shorter radius than the delay blink, but it still will save your life because if you hit it, you're like, oh shit, I'm in a bad spot. And you try to blink out with delayed blink. If you don't do it early enough, you're getting caught in all that damage in that bad situation. This one, boom, you're out of it and you're safe-ish. You know, well, you're at least out of the danger for that moment. And then you can kind of figure out what's going on. I love cleric sandals. It's an immediate blink and also, Having a double blink as a frost is super sick. Nobody can catch it. You blink with your sandals, blink with your W. Fucking it's awesome. Another default um, shoe would be the assassin shoe. The assassin shoe is just, I think everybody should have this shoe to um, 100 spec, no matter what you play. Assassin shoe is great. So you have over here, you got refreshing sprint. It's on a 30 second cooldown. Increase your movement speed by 100% for three seconds. It reduces all your cold down, cold downs. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> reduces all your cooldowns slightly uh super awesome super super awesome you got dodge roll which if you're in a in a situation where you need a dodge roll you got dodge roll and you're invulnerable to um damage when you're dodge rolling super freaking awesome also this shoe is so versatile because let's say you're in uh random dungeons you're over here rocking the old just refreshing sprint you know catch up the group finish the dungeon fast and then also you're getting cooldowns faster or you can go over here to the other one real fast just called run um 60 run for seven seconds good for traveling it is good for traveling you travel quite a bit of distance good for catching people too um but let's say you get to a legendary boss <laughs> you're gonna need this dodge row because sometimes you know what you're gonna do if you're in there and you don't have any dodge rows or blinks or nothing like that so this is the most versatile shoe in albion hands down i don't care what anybody says assassin boots most versatile shoe hands down oh uh, one last helmet i've got to talk about sorry about this is the Night Helm. Now the Night Helm is more of a ZVZ style weapon, uh, but you can also use it in the PvP and small scale PvE fights and stuff like that. 
PvE fights, PvP, PvE. Uh, basically, this, face is called, this thing is called a displacement immunity. So basically, you just pop it, and then everybody around you, up to five allies. Not everybody, just up to five allies. Um, your resistance is increased, and you're immune to displacement effects. Like, you know, knockbacks, um, roots, stuns, fears, and all that kind of weird shit like that. Um, it lasts, um, you know, it's pretty cool. So, this is really awesome because... Uh, there's certain like uh, random dungeon bosses that you need this for like some of the bosses I'm sorry I can't remember the name but they pull you together and then they knock you back and then they slow you and stuff like that if you have this displacement immunity on you and your team you won't be knocked back you won't take that extra damage you won't be slowed you can continue burning the boss this is also good for uh, when groups are trying to uh, attack you like if they're trying to jump you if you can pop this off um, you can spread out and get a nice reset or, you know, if you're trying to push on enemies and they drop a wind wall down or a firewall or, or they're trying to separate you from them, you pop this, your boys just go in, bam, smack them out. Um, one last thing here, the Scholar Shoes, what I was going to talk about here. The Scholar Shoes has an ability called uh, Force uh, Focus Run. Now, this is kind of like, to me, one of the most uh, one of the most important shoes to have because, um, like I said, now I know the Cleric is super fun and I also said that the... Um, the assassin shoe is really good because assassin has a dodge row. But this one's also really good because you have the first um, ability here. Um, this sprint gives you mana and a little bit of um, so a little bit of like you know movement speed. Well, not a little bit, 100% for three seconds. Then of course you have run, so they all have run on them. But the middle ability here, which is the focus of this shoe, you you focus run. You run for 100%. And you're immune to any appearing effects like you know roots, stuns, fears, and stuff like. Well, I mean not stuns anymore, but you used to be immune to that. Uh, but you can, but you, and you can't go through firewalls and wind walls and stuff like that anymore. But you can't be like, um, you can't be affected by that stuff. And it's really awesome. But the best thing is, as you're doing this, uh, you're getting mana back. So that's super awesome. So like, nice little win-win. And they look like cowboy boots. So that's kind of the best part. You know what I'm saying, boys? When you're going out to just club, got your little cat, got your white cowboy boots out. You know, just new goop boofing. You know, boys. One second. So the last thing about this is capes. Um, the undead cape is so much fun out in the random dungeons because you know if you die, you go invisible and study damage. But the overall, the best cape for this actual build is going to be the Morgana cape because the Morgana cape, when you activate your E, increases your um, cast speed and, and attack speed by 50% for 8 seconds. Fucking disgusting. You can throw some nasty damage out to these boys. Um, this is the preferred cape for fire, for here, for frost. Because, you know, you have a lot of cast speed and stuff like that. And your E is kind of the big portion of your damage. So, that's the preferred cape. Okay, guys. So, this is going to be the interview portion of the video. I'm going to start doing this with a lot of my videos. A lot of my guides. I'm going to have players that excel in these weapons. And have them come up. We can pick their knowledge and ask them why they started playing these weapons. This is the video of Shazar doing a GVG in the background. Um, it's on his alt. But this is Shazar. He's against um, one of Money Guild's uh, teams. One of, one of Derek's Money Guild teams. Um, so, Shazar, what made you wanted to start playing Frost? <laughs> Alright, brother. No, 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 no. So, yeah, basically what happened was I was HC in a lot. I got a lot of fame. And I needed to pick a, a ranged DPS weapon to uh, start G and Gene with. And I chose uh, Frost because of, of a potential with Frost Nova. So you can blink in, blink out, uh, catch Cloffies in the back, or just double blink forward, pop a gig, and just start turreting. So Frost had a lot of potential to cause a, a lot of AoE pressure. So you were, you were playing Frost more for like catch and pressure and not so much for just pure like uh, damage. You, you like the utility of it. To be honest, the Frost damage is pretty shit. Like uh, your Q doesn't do anything to tanks unless you have someone with armor pierce on your team. It was there for the AoE pressure. You know, you'd sack up your Druid rope and just drop it all on the coffees. And with the double blink, you're able to you know, reposition on the GVG field like, quite quickly and always be sort of casting on the back line. Awesome, awesome. So what would be, what's your favorite Frost staff? It has to be a great Frost because the, with the way Frost works is you, you stack up on the tank, you, you're kiting, slowing down the, uh, the enemy, the front line, and then you just drop that massive E on the back line and no other Frost stuff does it better than the great Frost. Awesome, awesome. So how long have you been playing Frost? Fuck, it started like May last year, right? And I played it for about three months for I quit. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Okay, what's your favorite frost build for like uh GBG and then Z V Z and then open world if they if they are uh, different? Right, I think for G V G it's the cleric sandals, the druid robe with the royal cow and the bridge watch cow. 
and uh, bridge watch cape because you never auto attack and when you drop that auto attack and, and you slow them it, it really helps you to stack up and kite around and just that whole mana build is what frost needs for open world i think it's pretty bad frost doesn't do enough damage but when you're ganking i think uh, icicle or one-handed frost would be better and that would be with a cleric robe for defensives and night helm and just any shoes of run but i prefer hunter shoes uh yeah i guess that's, that's pretty much it shizar <laughs> that's yeah, it <laughs> oh dude it, thank you so much thanks for uh, taking your time and coming and doing this brother All right, thanks, brother. I'll see you in Albion. Right, <laughs> have, yeah. have a good weekend, boss. You too. All right, boys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, hit it down below in the link. Um, either tomorrow or the day after that, I have a fire guide coming out. And then we have uh, Sorab is going to be on that with me. And he's going to talk me through some stuff here for you. And I'm going to give you a little interview with Sorab for the fire guide. And then after that... We're going to do spears. I know everybody's asking about spears, so spear guides coming after that. So like I said, thank you guys so much for being patient. Let me take my time to get this video out to you with random dungeons and 25% fame and all that stuff. I've been really, really, really focusing on uh, Twitch. And I'm trying to make as much time as I can here for YouTube. And I will be doing that more. I, I hope. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm super hoping. All right. Uh, if you have any, any questions about the builds or anything like that, hit me up down in the comments below or come to my uh, Twitch channel. I answer all questions and I have a lot of really cool build guides on my Twitch channel as well. Um, as always, thank you guys so much. I love you and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.